in a peaceful country church. Today's Sunday school lesson is on a very important and ancient subject. It's an old story, older than the Bible itself. Boys and girls, our lesson this morning is taken from the Old Testament, the prophet Joel. Joel is one of the minor prophets, and there's just three short chapters in this book. But this book tells us about grasshoppers. We want to study about grasshoppers this morning, how they plague the land of Israel. Hear this. Give ear all the inhabitants of the land. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children. What the cutting locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. And what the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. What is it, Joan? Teacher, what is a locust? Locust is the name ancient writers gave to the grasshopper. And this is how the Bible describes the infestation. For a nation has come up against my land, powerful and without number. Its teeth are lion's teeth. The fields are laid waste. The ground mourns because the grain is destroyed. Be ashamed, O tillers of the soil, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. Unto thee, O Lord, I cry, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and flame has burned all the trees of the field. Even the beasts of the field cry to thee, because the rivers of waters are dried up. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, but after them a desolate wilderness, and nothing escapes them. To you men of the soil, this is a familiar story. You know when the hoppers get out of hand, an outbreak can hit the day just like the plague described in the Bible. But not all farmers know that these plagues can be prevented. In American history, in the so-called grasshopper states, outbreaks have come frequently, with devastating impact on the nation's agricultural economy. When such a catastrophe occurs, everyone affected asks, where did all the hoppers come from? The trouble never just happens. Take the Midwest in the early 1930s. First one, then another species appeared and became active. As usual, the females reproduced one or two generations during that summer. Most of the eggs, from the old as well as the new females, remained in the ground all winter and hatched out the next spring. Every birth can be the beginning of an outbreak, because in an average summer, a grasshopper of one species lays approximately 200 eggs. If the adult hopper population were to remain the same, 198 eggs or hoppers had to die. But instead, two, six, eight, ten, or perhaps fifty survived. The grasshopper population then multiplied accordingly. 1934 was an extremely favorable growing year for grasshoppers. A pyramiding effect resulted, a growth of staggering dimensions. Swarming over the land, grasshoppers destroyed 25 to 75 percent of all crops in many areas eating thousands of acres, ruining the alfalfa, consuming small grains, stripping the trees and shrubs in shelter belts, devouring the vegetative cover from off this land, laying it bare. Thus, grasshoppers in the 30s set the stage for disaster. Without cover on the ground, life-giving topsoil was blown away. Ultimately, the nation struggled with the Dust Bowl. Today, we look back on a record of staggering losses. Grasshoppers have accounted for hundreds of millions of dollars in crop damage. 
Grasshopper damage is not limited to any single crop or area. Farmers the country over know the grasshopper as a migratory, voracious feeder, not too fussy about its diet. During severe outbreaks, they devour entire fields of small grains. They like cotton, particularly the young plants, and corn, including the stalk and hay crops, especially alfalfa. They also like sweet clover and grasses. After destroying the crops, they attack the trees. The plague follows a natural pattern set before biblical times. As this farmer is discovering, grasshoppers go for the most vulnerable parts of the plant. They bite off grain heads, flax, and cotton bowls. Though the rest of the plant remains, sometimes the yield is not worth the harvest. In addition, grasshoppers have devastated range and pasture, making the insect responsible for tremendous dollar losses in feed and forced sales of unfattened animals. Ever since man began to grow his food, he has competed with grasshoppers. He has faced miles of these swarming insects feeding on his crops from forenoon to sundown. Grasshoppers leave behind rivers that are too thick to drink and too thin to plow. And like compounded interest, as the farmers went broke, so did the merchants and American economy. To control an insect, you have to know it. Take a good look at one of your most costly pests. He is famous for remarkable leaping and flying power, for a ravenous appetite, for existing in hundreds of different species. But in the United States, only five species account for 90% of all cultivated crop damage. They are the migratory grasshopper, the differential grasshopper, the two-striped hopper, the red-legged hopper, the clear-winged hopper. To learn how to kill this ravenous insect, you must understand its life cycle and become familiar with its favorite egg-laying sites. Some lay eggs throughout grain and other crops. Some in idle land grown to weeds. Some in field margins, bordering row crops on which they feed. Others in sod. Some along roadsides, ditch and canal banks and right of ways. Before cold weather sets in, the female grasshopper, when ready to lay eggs, first probes the soil or sod for the right spot. Then she deposits her eggs an inch or two under the ground in tunnels burrowed out for the egg pods. Because a single grasshopper lays from 5 to 15 pods, one hopper can average 200 to 400 eggs. Weather conditions determine how many baby hoppers will survive. Cool, wet weather with long periods of high humidity are unfavorable. Extreme drought conditions shrivel the eggs. Low temperatures, reduction of plant growth, and the young hoppers starve. But a cool and moist early spring, followed by a hot summer and ample food, then watch out. Baby hoppers, called nymphs, hatch about the time crops are planted. The image of its parent, except for size and lack of wings, but equally voracious. Thus, crops are susceptible to attack during the 40 to 60 day growing season. Then with fully developed wings, final growth.